Okay. Now, uh, just like with ActionScript, all the corresponding complex types, so if you were to have the various types from your application domain, all those types will be generated in C-sharp as well. And you can send not just primitives, but objects from your Silverlight application to the back end and, uh, and vice versa. So this way, uh, there is really no reason to parse XML or whatever. Because now, uh, one other thing that, that is worth pointing, pointing out is the client-server communication protocol that is used by our Silverlight support is also AMF. So if you're familiar with Flex, then you will know that AMF is a binary protocol that is, uh, is, uh, that, 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 that is used to serialize and deserialize objects. So we implemented that support in natively in Silverlight. And then the application that we generate and all the, the, the plumbing framework that we generate to enable integration also uses AMF. Okay? So that's Silverlight. Now, what I'm going to do very quick, quickly is switch to my Windows uh, VM and uh, show you what the Windows Phone 7 integration would look like. Now, while it is loading, I'm going to check if there are any questions. All right, so here is my Visual Studio. And uh, hopefully it will just work. But one thing that I noticed is that Civil, uh, Windows Phone 7 emulator is not entirely reliable. And sometimes it's probably because I'm running it in a virtual, uh, virtual machine. But let me just start it. I do have this project generated by WebWorp. So I'm just going to run it, and it starts this emulator. So this, this project that is generated is going to be deployed into the emulator, and hopefully we'll be able to see it running right there in Windows Phone 7. I don't know if you guys had, a, had any experience of playing with Windows Phone 7, but I got my device just, just yesterday, and uh, I'm, a, I'm an iPhone user. But I was quite pleasantly surprised just to play with a Windows Phone 7 device. I, I thought it was quite elegantly done. OK, so here it is. It has been loaded. And uh, it still says connecting to emulator. So hopefully it will be sooner than later. All right, so now it's deploying this app. And now this, this kind of setup is not ideal for real-time real -time webinars. But I just wanted you to, to see that in action. Now, going back to our AJAX support, it, it has been tested across really all known environments. So it's definitely cross-platform. Cross and uh, we tried it both in Safari, on Mac, on Linux, on Windows, on iPad and iPhone. It, is, it, is, it works across pretty much all devices and uh, client-side environments. All right, so deploy succeeded. So hopefully it will just run it. OK. So here it is, Phone Invoker. Let me just run this guy. It's loading. And well, that's that's not unexpected, you know. It, here it is. So here's this application. So it's a Silverlight app, and uh, just like on the traditional uh, app, you can select the, the the methods from the drop down, enter the Enter the values for the arguments, okay, and uh, just do the invocation from your Silverlight application to to the back end. So let's say if this is a list, this is how you add arguments. All right. So if this is a numeric value, you just you, you can see how slow this thing is. So I just click on this numeric keyboard, and then delay is about I don't know five ten, five ten seconds. Here, here it is. Here's the invocation. Okay. So that's that that should be. That should be it as far as the Windows Phone 7. OK. All right. OK, now let's, let's move on. Now, uh, some other things that we are doing, and it's not going to uh, make it in 4.1, but more than likely it's going to be just immediately uh, after, is very similar support is going to be added for both Android and iOS devices. So you will be able to generate the code uh, that will give you a full-blown Air-based or Java-based Android application, as well as the iOS application. 
So this, this way it's going to be very, very easy to get started with this kind of development and the actual integration. In fact, we have already prototyped the air, air part, and I did a webinar a few weeks ago where we demonstrated support and integration with Playbook and an Android device. And uh, uh, a recording of that, I believe, is going to be uh, uploaded and show, will show up on our blog very soon. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the next thing that I want to talk to you about is Grails integration. So for this, I'm going to uh, just quit some of the things here to release more memory. Okay, so this is my local web work. I'm going to quit that. And um, so uh, this is my my Grails is my my Grails home. So let, let's just let me show you how the Grails integration actually works. Okay, so first of all, let's create a Grails Grails app. So Grails create app and let's call it demo. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with Grails, Grails is sort of Java-based Rails implementation. That's a, a, you know I'm, I'm I'm fairly new to Grails. If this if someone has a better description, uh, then uh, you know I definitely welcome ideas. But if you don't know about Grails, I recommend just googling it and reading about it. If you're if you are coming from Java background, a lot of things will will be very uh, familiar to you. Uh, one thing that it does particularly uh, well is just uh, the, the simplicity of getting started with data-driven applications is uh, is very similar to what you would which, what you might ha have heard of about Rails. All right, so uh, Peter's saying that it's much better than Rails, uh, and uh, you you might be right. You know, I'm not I'm not an expert in neither Rails nor Rails. I'm just I'm just getting started, and uh, so here. We created a, 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 an application called Demo, and I'm just going to switch to this directory. And uh, um, one thing that I will need to do is I'm just going to install a web work plugin. So right here, actually, you know what? I will need to bring up a list of commands that I had written in my Skype <laughs> account just to get things moving quickly. I say, closed it down just to come on, Skype. So let me just say don't disturb. And uh, I'm sorry, guys. I should have been better prepared for this. But hopefully it will worth the wait. OK. So we created the application. And uh, the next thing that we need to do is let me. All right, so we're going to install install the plugin, and uh, for do that there is a and the plugin is something that is actually included with WebWorp. So whenever you install WebWorp, what you will see is going to be something like this. So this is going to be your WebWorp installation integration folder Grails, and then the zip file that is included in integration Grails is the actual plugin. Okay, so you will know where to find it. Now, uh, so right here, I'm going to say Grails uh, install plugin, and uh, here's my pri uh, plugin, Grails Flex Web Warp 0.1. This is going to get run, and now it is installed plugin into my application. Now, once the web is installed, it actually gives you the web warp functionality, including the console and the integration server, the RPC, remote procedure call piece, and messaging and RTMP all right in there. Okay, so now let's create some sample code that Grails can do for us just, just to see it in action. Okay, so for that, let's just say Grails 
create dash domain dash class product. So that creates a domain class product, and it's going to be like bare bones. And we're going to enhance it in just a second. And also, we're going to create a service. For that, I'm going to say Grails create dash service product. Okay, so now these have been created. Let's take a look what it what it actually looks like. Okay, and for that, let me switch to my development folder, Grails demo. And here's my Grails app. So under services, there is a demo package. And here is the Groovy file. So Grails uses a language called Groovy, which is sort of Java-based from what I understood. Uh, and uh, let me open that in the text editor. All right, so this is, this is what it looks like. And by default, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Okay? Uh, but uh, we can actually modify this code. Let me find the right thing. And we're going to add uh, another method to it that will look like this. All right. So here we're adding a method called getProducts. And getProducts is, is invoking a method uh, called list, which essentially will just return a list of all the products that our application will deal with. Okay. So let me save this. And uh, uh, also we're going to take a look at the domain. And domain is going to be our domain object. It's product one created by Grails. Right, so this is what the product looks like. And we're going to enhance it a little bit and add some some columns. Okay? So these are the these are the columns or properties that, that the product class will have. Okay? Now we need to bootstrap this application and put some products into it just so so we have something that to work with. Okay? And for that if we're going to conf, there is bootstrap.groovy open that in the text editor. Here's what it looks like. And uh, we're going to add this block of code right here. Okay? So here we have a couple of couple of products, so uh, which each of them are just, you know, various phones. So there are four phones that we're registering with this particular application. Okay? So uh, now that that has been done, uh, we can just run the application and see what what it looks like. Okay, and for that, let's just say Grails run dash app. So if everything is being deployed and put in the right places, so now it starts up WebWorp, uh, and WebWorp will, you know, configure itself, get, get all the configuration from config file, will run uh, the RTMP server, and uh, let me open up a browser. All right, so now it is running. So if we take a look at slash demo, that's going to be the root of our Grails application. So here it is. Okay. Now, if we go to console.html, that's going to be the web warp, an instance of web warp that runs inside of our Grails application. Now, notice that the house icon has this blue glow, meaning that the RTMP server is up and running. And if we go into services, well, now we have the special node called Grails services. And then here, sure enough, there's demo product service and get products, which is uh, the method that we added. We click on that and invoke, and we get you know, a collection of all the uh, Grails objects directly in our Flex-based console. Okay? Now, what this means is, since the console is a Flex app, then you can just start building your Flex-based applications and use WebWorp as the integration server between your Flex environment and your Grails, uh, your Grails backend. But it's not just Flex; it's really all the client environments that we support. You know, Silverlight, Ajax, native Java. Uh, that would be running, let's say, in your Android phone, uh, or anything else for that matter. 